Hey guys, back again. And thanks for joining me and thanks for the people who watched the last video. Uh, again, you know, I want to try to do these every day. Even if it's for like 30 minutes or something like that, just do a quick uh, video on the on the channel and uh, do some painting and do a bit of uh, chatting. And, you know, I encourage people to ask questions, hobby questions, painting questions, you know, questions about Japan, anything you want to talk about. Uh, please leave them in the comments below. That way I can start replying to questions as I'm doing the videos. Um, just to make it a bit more interactive and we'll th uh, I'll think about doing a, like a live show at some point. Maybe dedicate one, uh, one night per week to do a live show. Um, maybe on a like Sunday night or Saturday night or something like that. Uh, for people, if, if that's something that people would be interested in doing. So just going to continue on with the, the Chaos Warrior for now. And I'm just going to give him another coat of that ivory on his the armor, the armor plates that we're going to do in that gold. Um, which I will use a like a flesh wash or sepia ink to create that effect. I won't actually use, um, you know, I'm not using, I'm not using actual gold paint for these. I'm using like a non-metallic metal, of course, for these guys. Uh, last night when I got home, um, I did a little bit of painting and I started uh, working on the the great ship, the Empire Great Ship, and just uh, went over the original paint job, which was green and uh, yellow and gold and that kind of thing. I just went over it with a uh, this color down here, which is basically just like a uh, it's called old rose. It's just a flesh color. And then when that, I did a couple of coats of that, and then when that was dry, I went over with a flat red, and um, then highlight it up with uh, adding a bit of yellow to the red. It's nowhere near finished. I've just sort of just done the first basic uh, layers of that and then just went over with the black to outline the other sections there. But again, I need to go over it and tidy up a bit. I mean, the ships themselves, they're quite nice models, but you know, they're not so um, incredibly finely detailed that I'm going to be really picky about uh, the painting aspect of them. Um, they're kind of like epic models and the same, you know, very same, uh, very similar scale actually. So, you know, you can make them look um, fairly decent, but you know, you're never gonna make them look incredibly uh, detailed as uh, a 28 mil miniature would be. Um, the, the details are, are fairly rough. Uh, given their age, I mean the three the three D modeling stuff now for these kind of things are, are really um, quite detailed, but the old old models, which I still prefer, if I'm to be uh, totally honest, I still prefer the old handmade uh, crafted models, design models. So yeah, but still, it'd be okay. So we're in the first stage of that. So I just wanted to get you know paint a, a ship for once. You know I've never painted a um, an actual model boat. Or ship or anything like that. I did get out the the dwarf fleet also, so I think these are the um, monitors. I think, or well, these are the monitors, maybe like the submarine class ships. This is the dreadnought. I know that, and I think the other ones are nautiluses. I think now they're actually painted by the gentleman I bought the uh, the models from, uh, which aren't too bad actually. I'm just gonna like the Great ship, I'm just going to go uh, straight over that and uh, touch them up in places. And I'm still wondering if I'm going to go with metallics or non metallics. I think I might just go with non metallics. I've been sort of umming and over, uh, umming and ahhing over it as to what to do. I'll need to give them a wash as well because they've got some bits of fur and stuff on it. They're really old. I think they've just been stuck in a box for many a year. Um, yeah, so there's not many mold lines that I can see on them, so they're quite clean. So, yeah, um, 
So that, that's that's really good. So I can I can start on those fairly soon and get them finished um, fairly soon too. So that'll be good. I did that in a separate video maybe for those Man of War fans. Uh, which I did recently join the group there on Facebook. They've got a nice little group there of, of people uh, dedicated for that game, which is good to see. If you're trying to keep all these old games alive somehow for us old blokes. Now, um, yeah, now I'll do the armor. So I'm just going to use a sepia wash. And that's how I've been doing it for these guys, and I just found that it works rather well. And I might um, also add if I can find it. Can't find it. That's good. Oh, here it is. So this is a heavy gold brown. I had a lot of people asking about these brushes yesterday on my Facebook page and that kind of thing and sending links to them and all that. It looks like they're only available in Japan through Amazon or through Rakuten or those kind of places, which is strange because I know that, you know, uh, Pen um, this brand Pentel. Yeah, Pentel is a global brand, so they've got offices all around the world, so I'm, I'm surprised people can't get them anywhere else. And normally I'll be working today, but I'm not working. They, um, they told me not to come in because there's no work. So just due to the, the coronavirus pandemic and all that kind of thing, they've, um, they're reducing the, the number of classes and hours that... But uh, that's fine, I can do some more hobby at home, which is good. So I'll just give that, yeah, one wash like that and let that dry. Okay, now, um, I'm gonna add a bit of pink and I'm gonna add pink to that handle because I haven't added any pink so far. I might do some freehand or something later, but I think that handle will look nice in a pink. Now this is the game color pink from Vallejo. Um, I think it's called Tentacle Pink or something. I might do some pink on this little icon here. Yeah, and if I haven't mentioned already, it's it's raining like quite heavily here at the moment so it's a perfect day to be stuck at home painting and my son's uh, at school today and he's kindergarten so unfortunately I can't do hobby all day I've got to do other things as well but I thought I'd just take the opportunity this morning to get some painting done and I hope you guys are doing the same Uh, yeah, I just noticed this morning that Diego, um, he post he posted a comment on the channel saying that he just painted this guy or he's painting this guy now, but which he which he did he actually did paint it because I did see it on the old Hammer group uh, with the Chaos Warband that he's doing. He's doing like a corn Chaos War Warband, which are really nice on like like larger round bases. Um, he might use it for like you know, role playing or um, board games or whatever. Um, yeah, he's done a really nice job on those, so if you're um, 
if you're in the Warham uh, Old Hammer group or if you want to join, you'll see his his miniatures there and one of these that this guy's featured in it in his warband. Um, I'm just going to take all of that ink and just go over it again. My wife just returned home, so hopefully she's not going to yell at me or shout at me downstairs. Not angrily, just say, you know, I'm home, home or whatever. So you might hear some noise in the background. I'm just going to get another colour, another brown too. Should be... Burnt Umber. Which I need to order some more of, because I'm almost out of that. Um, now for that axe handle. I try that um, Arabic shadow. It's one of those other scale color paints. So, you know, the basic principle for anything that I do, I, I usually start dark and work my way up lighter uh, gradually um, you know some paint systems have like a like a tri tri color system where they have like a dark mid-tone light tone which are really good actually if um, you know if you think about getting into a, a new paint system or you know getting into painting um, those those kind of uh, paint systems are quite good uh, you know every every paint range has them in, uh, but some are particularly suited for it and they have a particular range which uh, show you the um, the different um, the different diff the, 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 the three different tri colors they have in a set, for instance. So this is coat the arm. So I've just bought some from them in the UK from Black Hat Miniatures. I just got some Goblin Green, like the the, the original Citadel Goblin Green colors. So they actually have the original Citadel paints, and they have another paint range uh, which has that tri paint system as well. Um, now I have tried this, and um, I do. Ha I also bought the um, the Vallejo Goblin Green also, um, and actually I prefer the Vallejo one only because the coverage is better. the The Cote d'Armes paints are very very thin. The pigment's so thin that you need to do it in multiple coats. So that's a, that's a shame. I can't remember if the original Citadel paints were like that or not. I thought they were quite uh, heavy uh, pigmented. And, um, you know, you could do something in a couple of coats. So, but, you know, I've got three pot pots of it. So I'm going to do that for the, the actual bases, the, the sanded part of the base. That's that's perfect for that. And then do the edges with the other, um, the other one, the Goblin Green one uh, from the Vallejo range. So they'll complement each other well. But um, yeah, like you know, I like to branch out and have a look at some other paint, paint, um, paint brands, uh, paint, paint, uh, sorry, paint brands from every now, and, every now and again, if I have a chance. So Just a mix of that, I'll just do the handle. You could dry brush it if you wanted to, because it's, um, that's perfectly possible. You know, you could do that if you wanted to. I'm just gonna brush it and slide it in. Now 
I might start uh, working on that um, and all that fur, his fur, fur coat and his headdress and um, which is all part of this, it's all part of the one, yeah it is all part of the same thing, okay that's good. I thought maybe they were two separate pieces but they're not, so I'll get stuck into that. Um, I might, what do I use for that, I use the Tan Earth, wasn't it? I'm going to have Tan Earth and I'm going to miss that um, green grey in there, I think. Do the ivory yet? What's on the green room? Just putting that on this brush and just sort of just going to brush it straight over. Um, so it's not actually dry brushing. I, I prefer just to keep the paint wet. Uh, take off like you know the excess on a just wipe just quickly wipe it off on a tissue or something. Uh, I prefer not to do dry brushing only because it makes the paint well dry and chalky and I don't like that effect to it. So you can do it with um, the paint still wet on your brush. And just sort of lightly go over that uh, fur. So anything with fur, this kind of texture you can approach the same technique with, so. Just think, what the, what's the date today? It's the 18th today, I think. So I've still got some time to get these guys finished. I have eight in total. That's my goal for this, this month's target, is to get all eight finished. Now, whether I have them all eight on on camera, I don't know, because I need to work fairly quick. So we'll see how we go. Uh, that was the initial plan anyway, to record it all the tutorials on, on the channel for these guys and intermix some other models in at the same time. The thing about Diego, um, I do have some models that I need to paint for uh, from his range as well, uh, which if you're not familiar with, it's Nightmare Games. I've done some reviews of their miniatures before on the channel. Um, the most recent one being those Gretchen models that Cav Adams designed for him, and they're really, really nice models. And I've got one that's sort of partly painted, so I need to get that out. And that's going to be one of my uh, upcoming holiday uh, painting tasks to get that finished. Because I've got a lot of miniatures that are sort of in a halfway state of being painted. and Which is fun because you can sort of switch around different projects at the same time. Some people just like to be completists and like to finish like start and finish something. I've quite liked the idea of you know just rotating things around and that way you don't get that projects don't get stale and then you've got a good variation of things to do. So I don't think it looks too bad. <clears throat> I might add a little wash or something on there. Um, Bring to, yeah, to give a bit more um, warmth to that and a bit more definition to that textured woolly coat he's got wearing, he's wearing there. So I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll just use the um, other wash, or heavier now, to bring out the colours and all those armor plates.
I'm trying to think yesterday, like whether this guy was part of an old set of miniatures for um, maybe Dungeon Quest Heroes or something like that. I don't know, I just had, I just remembered that, you know, way, way, way back when um, a friend of mine, or a guy we used to game with, he had uh, a box set and it contained a lot of, um, you know, the old Hammer miniatures for, I think it was called Dungeon Quest, and I think maybe this guy was part of that. I'm not sure. I'm just taking some of that uh, pink and adding some of the ivory to it and to highlight the pink. Yeah, it's raining really hard today, actually. It's, it's a really good day for um, just sitting at home, painting and just taking it easy, so it's great. Well pleased about that. Now, if I, if I can only get a game in at some point, that'd be even better. Uh, but I think the closest thing we'll have to a game will be running that Advanced Hero Quest solo game for now, for the next few weeks anyway, because um, we've sort of we've sort of postponed our Warhammer battle until you know the first week of May or something like that. Maybe I'm just gonna see how it goes. We're just gonna see you know how things pan out and. Um, you know, not take risks, uh, you know, unnecessary risks in um, in getting together with people at the moment. Okay, so um, what are we going to do next? We're going to do. Let me have a look. Um, I want to get that axe handle finished, so. If anybody's got any uh, Amazon Prime TV show recommendations, please let me know. I found another one on the weekend through the Beast of War channel. They they mentioned the uh, the TV show Tales from the Loop, which uh, have a Kickstarter up and running at the moment, I think, or soon uh, for a board game for that. And I had not heard of that TV show before, and I. Started watching it on the weekend, last weekend, and absolutely loved it, and just watched the whole uh, eight episodes in a binge watch when I was making my terrain. Yeah, really, really good show. Really enjoyed that. And now just watching uh, Goliath with that Billy Bob Thornton. I really like him as, a, as an actor and a character. So currently watching that. So if you've got any yeah, if you've got any recommendations, please let me know. Maybe there's something you've watched recently that you really liked. It's a bit hard to find stuff on there, to be honest. I like Netflix better as an interface to work to find things or for it to recommend you things or whatever. I'm just gonna add some of that green grey to that brown. So you've noticed that I haven't used any white. And um, yeah, I just prefer not to use it as, uh, as as much as possible, unless something has to be white. 
like you know when I get around to painting my high elves, um, you know they will be white because you know want them want their uniforms to be you know quite bright. So you know very light blue greens or blue no, actually they'd be allowed blue greys, won't they? And white for them. Okay, that looks okay. So now I will just taking a little bit of that burnt umber, just pushing a little bit to the side and just watering it down a bit. I'm just going to add some to the axe handle here. <clears throat> I do say if I sound a bit groggy, it's because I, I drank a little bit too much last night. Not having to work today, I had a couple of beers and a couple of whiskeys, as you do. Now, those horns. Um, um, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to outline them in black first, I suppose, to start off with. Lining in here, if I need to line something in, um, just tidy things up as we go along with the black. Um, yeah, let me know about what you want to see, you know, painting wise on the channel too. You know, I was sort of toying with the idea of you know, it's something that's not really done, or not that I've seen anyway. Yeah, it's me like basically switching between three or four models during one video. So, you know, I might have like a Chaos Warrior like this, like a fantasy model, then maybe um, like a second head 40k model um, like a man of war model um, something like that, maybe three models that i can switch between in one video maybe looking at different techniques or something like that uh, i want to do the um, like paint it like a banner i might do that the sails for the man of war uh, ships um, i want to get around to doing that in a, in a video as well because well i've never i've never done that in a video yet like from basically from the very start to the finish of making a banner. Uh, maybe that'll be interesting for you guys if you if you want to attempt to do that yourself. I know Justin was thinking about making his own banners for his Empire uh, army at the moment. He was asking me about it the other day. So that might be a good good one for the channel too, as I approach the you know the completion of painting that Empire ship. I want to do the the sails for it, so I might put that in a video as well. So yeah, let me know in the comments uh, what you want to see in the future in regards to the painting uh, tutorial side of things. It's having a nice cup of tea. It's actually getting me cold now. I've been taken away from the tea, so I need to go and make another cup of tea soon. Now, um, now the armor. <clears throat> So using that gold brown and put some ivory in there. I think we can go 
go back and start highlighting that up. And some of the other models, the especially the Beastmen, when I did this, um, because they're all undercoated white, of course, like all the other models are. But yeah, I just went straight over with the, because I was working, you know, I was doing batch painting. I was, you know, trying to get as many done as I possibly could, could in a in a reasonable amount of time. So I just went over, went over straight over with the, with the ink straight over the white, and it looked quite nice. You know, it, it looked really nice. It really picked out all the details well, especially the uh, Bob Ollie Beastman. His particular style of sculpting. Um, really uh, suits that kind of sort of ink wash uh, painting I found that and I really liked his mini miniatures actually the the beastman he did were brilliant I, I've never painted one of those before and um, yeah I really really like them now I didn't really fancy them too much in photographs and the catalogs before but now having actually painted one yeah I think they're you know fast becoming my favorite beastman. Yeah, yeah, Jez's beastmen are really good too. And the even the Michael Perry stuff what they did for fifth edition, those beastmen, I, I quite like those too. I like the look of them, but I prefer the old hammer ones. And I do have some holidays coming up, which is good, um, at the end of this month. So I've got about, well, I've got eight days, but hopefully I'm going to extend that to 12 days if I can get, get to do that with my boss. If I can, if he's going to close, he might close the, the business down for an extra three days over the holidays, depending how, how, how things pan out, which would be good if... Um, well, good and bad, I suppose, but if that's going to happen, then I'll have more time to do some more hobby, and in that time, I'm going to um, probably not paint anything new, probably just go back and start uh, finishing a lot of unfinished stuff. Uh, do the Manowar stuff, of course, like, you know, start working on that. Um, in the background but yeah trying to get finished trying to finish off all the rebasing i'm rebasing all my uh orphan goblins at the moment with the goblin green basing i thought you know if i'm going to do this i'm going to go all the way 100 percent. and i'm glad i did actually i'm glad i did that because i really like the the goblin green basing the old style of basing now it's really it's it's actually lifted the colors it's it's made everything look lighter and um, yeah, I really prefer that. Even though I do, I do like the ones I'm doing now for for Jesse's chaos stuff, like the dark green, which and the black, black um, uh, sides and the lighter green drivers on top. You know, that's like a really old hammer kind of style of uh, basing, and I really like that too. Um, and it really fits that era era of model, I think. Okay, that doesn't look too bad, not too shabby. So, now, I'm just going to get another colour, one of my other favourite colours. Um, that's Hull Red. If you don't have Hull Red in your painting collection, in your paint collection, then please get it, because I use that a lot. And I'll show you why. I didn't use it for many, many years until, I don't know, a few years back. I picked it up in a when I when I made an order and just never looked back. Like just just as like a wash, um, especially on Beastman, on Skaven, on any kind of leather, fur, um, uh, even weapons and that kind of thing. Especially for undead and that kind of stuff. This color is just magic. It just just transforms stuff. 
I find even for like even for the stuff or the gold and that kind of thing I really like using that it's just like a final uh, tint and a wash to complement those kind of colors anything brown uh, but e even other colors like greens and that kind of thing um, I, I enjoy using the uh, hull red is just like a wash just to help give some definition and um, add some extra shading in places um, yeah so I just find it, it complements so many different colors and it just adds that final touch that I need in finishing things so yeah I'll do it over the like the parts of the armor it looks a bit sort of rusty there maybe um, you know parts were on the on the handle uh, I could even do it on the pink if I wanted to I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do it on the pink but if I wanted to yeah it would it would suit that I mean his eye sockets um, yeah so it's become a um, staple sort of paint in my Uh, in my in my sort of color mixes and that kind of thing as a final final touch maybe you can see the difference already you probably notice that on the other miniatures too if you look at the other miniatures you'll see that kind of brown reddish tint to the um, to the clothing or to the armor and that kind of thing Maybe it's just my style, I don't know. Maybe it's too much, maybe people don't like it. I don't know. I find it quite nice. Especially for these Chaos kind of warriors. Yeah, Chaos, I don't have a Chaos army. It's like one of those things when you're, you know, when you're younger, I think, I think everybody wanted a Chaos army when they first started playing Warhammer and you know, I did have a, a Nurgle army. I think I had mainly Nurgle armies for um, second edition 40k and Warhammer Fantasy. And I, I remember one particular game. The only game I really remember because my, you know, this this is a long time ago. My memory's really, fa uh, you know, quite hazy and um, for such a long time ago. But I remember playing uh, Marcus. Marcus, if you're if you're watching and listening, you'll remember. Maybe you you remember too against your Eldar. I played second ed second ed ed forty k using the um, using that codex and in there you had like an army list that you could take uh, regular chaos warriors beastmen trolls minotaurs it was awesome it was brilliant so I just I remember just taking a massive army of all these kind of various types of fantasy troops I had like a, a, a fantasy chaos army too. And um, yeah, just I just remember doing all the hand-to-hand -hand combat battles. It was awesome. It was it was really it was my, my my most memorable game of all the games I've ever played. I lost it, but I didn't care. Like it was just so much fun. And um, if I get the opportunity, I'll, I'll probably want to do uh, uh, an army similar to that in the future. And um, as I really love that kind of. Um, Well, you know, I, I just I just imagine chaos being all all these kind of yeah they're dragging sort of stuff through the warp from from all different kinds of worlds and timelines and that kind of thing. So it's just like a big motley crew of all these different mercenaries and warriors and yeah, I really like that theme to it. So it's got a nice blend. It's it's real. That's really old hammer, really, isn't it? Because old hammer was like that. And it's, it had a um, you know a mix of everything that you wanted in it. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, and I'm just going to um, think about those horns now while that's drying. Um, yeah, I don't really know what colour to paint. I'm, like, I'm just going to paint it in the, in like this dark brown. Yeah, it's a shame because I can't remember a lot of the stuff from back in the day now. It's been so long. My, my memory's terrible. Like, you know, trying to remember things 25 years ago, it's almost impossible. 
But um, yeah, certain games I still remember. And maybe you guys too, you know, you have games that you, you know, you, you really f uh, fondly remember from back in the day. Um, and I'm going to paint that cap, what it is, that cap, on his horn in the same colour. Should have done that before, but never mind. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a bit, um, and I'm going to just do the base. Uh, the way I'm doing the bases is I'm using um, this heavy black green from the um, Vallejo Game Color range. And we should be able to finish this guy today. We should be good. Jesse will be happy about that. And I'll have my first first miniature finished for the challenge. So I won't have anything. Uh, no, I won't have nothing done this month at least. So that's good. Um, so if you're not if you're not aware of the challenge, I, I I'd highly recommend that you go and visit their blog. It's the old, uh, old world army challenge. If you look at that, if you search that up in the, in in Google, and I might uh, drop a link uh, later on in the, um, in the description of the video below. Uh, if you go to that site, you'll you'll come across a blog that has um, about maybe about twenty or more contestants painting at least two hundred points of their chosen army, which has to be either a third edition or fourth edition Whitemer Fantasy Army. Uh, they have to paint 200 points per month, and that's basically just a motivation thing. It's not like you win anything at the end, really. You, there are prizes for, um, I think, you know, if uh, I think it's mainly, I think, either the group votes on their most favorite army at the end or something like that perhaps and then they award some kind of they find some kind of prize uh, toward that award that person but it's not really meant as a painting competition you know so you know which I which I like it's not, it's not about painting or being the best or anything like that it's like you know you just find you know you just find a project that you want to get done and paint it within six months and um, you know you allocate 200 points per month that you want to paint and then it's just your responsibility to um, to upload your progress uh, each month and uh, submit it before the end of the month, and then it gets uh, published. And yeah, people can get to admire and maybe ins be inspired by your work. And it's, they've got some really really nice projects going on there at the moment. So yeah, go and check it out. It's a really good idea. This is my first time joining it uh, this year, and, and actually Jesse, the guy I'm painting this stuff for, he joined it as well. He doesn't have actually a painted army. That's why he's getting me to paint these Chaos Warriors for him. So he's painting, painting up his undead army and it looks really good. You know, he's done a cracking job on those. They look, they look awesome. For somebody who doesn't paint, um, I think he's done a sterling job on those. So yeah, go and check those out. Um, you've got a lot of uh, old hammer stuff um, on there and the hero hammer stuff as well, like high elf armies, goblin armies, uh, skaven armies. Uh, there's a chaos, really nice Chaos Dwarf army. I think there's two Chaos Dwarf armies on there at the moment. Uh, wood Elf, beautiful Wood Elf armies. Um, so yeah, you know you'll be you'll be there for ages, just looking and, and uh, scrolling through all the different uh, posts they've put up there. So we're halfway through it. So we've got another three months to go. Yeah, three months ago. This will be the yeah. So it finishes in June, doesn't it? So the six month. So. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've done well because it, the goal is to paint a thousand points. Well, I've, I've painted well over a thousand points. I think I'm up to about probably more than 2000 points, well over 2000 points now because in third edition chaos was so expensive, you know, chaos warriors were like crazy expensive. The demonettes that I just painted were like a hundred points each. So it's like 400 points just for the, uh, four, um, the champions like 75 points each. So, um. I already painted like a thousand points last last month already. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great motivator. I'm definitely going to do it next year uh, when it starts up again. And they're thinking about doing um, Warhammer 
uh, 40k second edition as, uh, or Rogue Trader, I should say, Rogue Trader as a uh, possible candidate as well to be included in the challenge, which would be brilliant because I might actually take him up on that offer and I might um, do my Orc, uh, Orc Army, which was uh, very, very kindly uh, sent to me by David Schooley. David, if, you, David, if you're listening, they're still tucked away in my my closet, mate, they're going to be sitting there until I'm ready to paint them. So, um, and for David, I'm painting up some um, Mordenheim war, um, war band. So you might have seen the last one I, I, I uh, did on the video before of uh, the undead war band that I painted for him. I've got another two to do. So they will be featured in, uh, in an upcoming video. No doubt, because I've got the witch hunters I'm working on now. So, okay, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let that dry. The horns I'm still going to think about for now. Um, I'm still thinking about that. Uh, they should, I think, I think they, they really should be dark. I'm just thinking whether it should be dark brown or black. I'm not really sure. I think I might stick with dark brown, and I'm just going to um, use some of that uh, brown umber. And maybe the same color for the axe handle as well. With that brown there. So apologize if you I apologize if you hear a lot of background noise. It's my wife walking around the house. She has to go to work later, so she's probably just getting ready. She's probably gonna burst in through the door in a minute. <laughs> okay, that doesn't too bad. And then I'll just put a final highlight. Maybe a bit more subdued, not too bright, not too light. And I think that'll be fine. I think that'll work. a little bit of highlighting on that the capped end here and just using some of that whole red again I'm just gonna do some lining in Anything that I've maybe missed, or just double checking, but yeah, apart from that, I think he's done. I was gonna finish the base, and yeah, well, I, I can do that later. It's not, um, it's not really uh, necessarily needs to be done now. I can finish it later when I when I do the all, all of them at the same time, perhaps. But it's basically just yeah, just basically coat of that dark heavy um, green and then I would add my maybe two coats of that and then uh, highlight it up with adding some goblin green to that mix and then some yellow uh, for a final highlight then paint the um, the base rim in black and that's it so I'm gonna leave it there guys I think that we're at the 51 minute mark I think that's quite enough today um, you know I hope I hope you enjoyed that Fairly quick tutorial, really. It didn't take that long, did it? So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully that was, you know, some tips in there that were helpful for you. 
uh, please leave your comments below. Uh, tell me what you want to see in a future video. Maybe I have something here that's um, that's suitable for that. But I think for the next video, we will crack on with um, this guy, which I've actually started. I've just put a, uh, basically just to put a base of pink on his armor. And um, I think that'll be the next guy that I'll do. Now, if I'm gonna do it today, I'll make another video. I really don't mind doing that, guys. So, you know, uh, if it's interesting for people to watch me painting these guys and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. I'm, I'm, I found it I'm more comfortable now in this position with the with the camera setting like this and the desk and the desk and the and the chair in a more uh, more comfortable position for me. So that's good good for you guys. So I can make more videos. Um, but yeah, he'll be the next guy, and I might add some other uh, miniatures too. I really want to get these uh, advanced hero quest um, guys done. So I'm going to. Um, probably start doing some of these and um, yeah showing hopefully showing you some different colors and different techniques as we go along um, but yeah please I want to hear from people I want to get more interaction in the channel and and hopefully we can grow a little community here uh, for ourselves in the hero hammer hobby that we love so have a good day have a good day guys and thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one take care